Have you ever wondered how SolidWorks experts are able to go into a model like this and add a section where somebody can grab onto the model, whether it's a, a handle that you're able to grab onto and pull, or it's a soap bottle like this, or a toy gun, whatever the application is, it looks like it's very, very tricky geometry. But the truth is you can create this geometry with just a few features if you know what those features are. And what those features are is creating a split line in the area that you want to remove, then performing a delete face command to turn the solid into a surface body, then performing a fill command. And in that surface fill command, you can create a little guide here. It's called a constraint curve. Then you can knit those surfaces together and thicken everything back into a solid. So this is what I'm gonna teach you today. And if you enjoy this type of content and if you enjoy my style of training, be sure to check out twotalltoby.com slash training. We've got a lot of great training content on there and we're adding more every day. And we even have an upcoming tips and tricks training class. So if you wanna learn some awesome time-saving tips and tricks in SolidWorks, you can sign up for that two-day class with me your live instructor. So let's get into it here. If you don't have a soap bottle 3D CAD model, it's no problem. We can make a new model together here so that you can actually click along with me if you want, or you could just watch if you prefer to do that. So I'm gonna create a new model in millimeters. I'm gonna go to the top plane, begin a sketch, and I'm gonna create an ellipse. So here you can see I'm gonna create an ellipse. Let's make sure that the quadrant point is vertical to the origin. And then let's add the dimensions here. We'll make the minor axis or the minor diameter here 69, and we will make the major diameter here uh, 130. And then we're going to extrude this. So we'll go features extrude. And I don't know, let's extrude this up to uh, 420 millimeters. And let's put a little bit of draft on this, like two degrees of draft on this extrusion. And boom, there you go. You got yourself a soap bottle. I'll click edit appearance, I'll change the color, and yes, that looks lovely. So the tools that we're gonna learn about for this lesson are first of all, the split line command. We go to the front plane, we begin a sketch, we orient our view, we create a horizontal line that goes all the way across this bottle. And when we're done creating that horizontal line, we can go to the command features, curves, split line, features, curves, split line. And there's three options over here, silhouette, projection, intersection. We're gonna use projection today the whole time. So projection, we're gonna take the current sketch and we're gonna project it onto this face here. This is currently one single face that we extruded up as part of our solid extrusion. We hit the green check mark and now this is two faces. So if you wanna see those edges, you can go to the command view, display, tangent edges visible and now you can see that this is two faces it was one now it's two that's what the split line command does it injects an artificial edge along a single face let's let's uh let's roll back here and let's make another split line let's go to the front plane begin a sketch and now we're going to create a sketch of a spline now the next thing we're going to learn about in this lesson is that whenever you create a spline so i'm going to click here this first point click here click here and then I'll click over here like this. Whenever you create a spline, if you hit escape and then you click on that spline itself, you'll see that you have these things here that are called spline handles. And you can click and drag the little dot at the end of those handles to manipulate the behavior of the spline. And you can do that with any of the spline handles that show up. Now, if the spline handles don't show up for you, click options, go down here to sketch, and then there's an option here under sketch called enable spline tangency and curvature handles. If that option is not checked on, that's probably why you don't see the splines or the, I'm sorry, the spline handles. So you can see here that we can manipulate these spline handles and we can create a kind of curved region that runs across the top here. Don't go too crazy. Don't make it too exotic because we're going to use this curved region for the next uh, for the next feature. But just create a little curved region running across the top of the bottle here. And now once again, we're going to go to the command features, curve, split line. We're going to use the projection option and we're going to choose to split the top part of the bottle here. 
Now, the next tool that we're gonna learn about, so so far we've learned about split line and we've learned about spline with the uh, curvature handles, the ability to manipulate the curvature handles. The next tool we're gonna learn about is insert face delete. One of my favorite commands in SolidWorks, insert face delete. But usually when we do an insert face delete command, we say delete and patch. For this example, we're just gonna say delete. And when you choose insert face delete and you just say delete, what happens is, I'm gonna pick this face and I'm gonna pick this face. What happens is our solid model is converted into a surface model. So this is now a surface instead of a solid. So we can see here that if we go to the command insert face delete, before the delete face command here in the tree, we've got solid bodies one. And then after the delete face command here in the tree, we've got surface bodies one. So beginning the command insert face delete, choosing the option to simply delete that face, eliminating those faces, converts a solid body into a surface body. Pretty cool, a lot of people don't know about that. So that's the next thing that we learned is using the command insert face delete, removing the face that we split, and then turning that model into a surface model. So now we're gonna learn about what's called the surfaces command, filled surface. So surfaces, and then here it is, filled surface. So if you don't have the surfacing toolbar, you right mouse button, you go to tabs, and then you choose surfaces. So surfaces, filled surface. And when you go in here and you choose filled surface, what you can do is you can choose this opening. And what SolidWorks will do basically is kind of like lay a tarp or lay a blanket over that opening. So when you hit the green check mark, you'll see that SolidWorks has just kind of added, added a new face here and it's laid that face across that opening. But the cool thing about the surface fill command is if we do edit feature and we click here in the, in the box on this edge that we selected, currently the boundary uh, is being defined by a contact condition. So it's just laying that blanket across the top there. But there's a different option in there for each edge, and that option is tangent. And if we choose the option for tangent, now what SolidWorks does is it tries to make this new surface that we created tangent to the surrounding face here, tangent to that surrounding face. And so when we hit the green check mark, now we have a nice smooth transition into that filled surface. Pretty cool, right? So a filled surface, very powerful tool, but especially powerful when you can tell SolidWorks to maintain tangency to the surrounding faces. And it gets even more powerful if we roll back here before the surface fill and we go front plane, begin a sketch, orient our view. We're gonna create a single arc up here, just a little arc like this. Okay, it doesn't go all the way out to the end over here. It doesn't go all the way out to the end over here. Just a single arc running across the top here. And then we exit that sketch and then we roll forward to our surface fill. Now, if we edit the surface fill and we say edit feature here, and then we, uh, we choose this box down here that says constraint curves, constraint curves. What a constraint curve does is it lets us select that arc and now the fill surface tries to solve and tries to match that arc. How cool is that? So now it's maintaining tangency to all these surrounding edges, but it's also creating that constraint curve so that it runs right up to that constraint curve arc that we created. So we can hit the green check mark. And now the final thing that we need to do is turn this thing back into a solid. But instead of doing that, let's just get rid of all these features, except for the original bottle. So get rid of all these features here. So the only thing left is that original extrusion. And let's bring all these lessons together and create that grip. So we're gonna go to the front plane, begin a sketch. We're gonna begin a spline command. We're gonna create a spline that starts here comes in, so that's my second click. Down here, it's my third click, and then over here, that's my fourth click. We're gonna hit escape, we're gonna click on that spline, and we're gonna use these manipulator handles to kind of change the shape of the spline a little bit, these manipulator handles, to control what our split line is gonna end up looking like. Then, we're going to go to the command features, curves, split line. 
We're going to split this face here. So we hit the green check mark. Now that one single face is split into two faces. Then we're going to go to the command insert face delete. And when we go to the command insert face delete, we're going to click on this face here. We're going to just say we want to delete that face. We hit the green check mark. Now we go to the front plane, begin a sketch. We create a sketch of a spline. So we create a sketch of a spline here that maybe looks something like this. This is going to be our grips. We create a spline here that looks a little something like this. Maybe click on the spline, hit escape and click on the spline and take this manipulator handle and just, you know, by eyeballing it up, what you want to do is make sure that there's going to be a smooth transition here. So maybe what I would do is just move this down a little bit, kind of give myself, because remember, we're going to be coming off tangent from that edge. And you can do the same thing here on this side. So take this spline point, move it a little, move this manipulator handle so that you're going to have a nice smooth transition coming off of this edge and going into your spline point. That's going to help when you go to create that fill surface and you're using the constraint curve. So just kind of manipulate this a little bit so that you give yourself a, the best chance of this thing working out. And now we're going to exit that sketch. And now we're going to go to the command surfaces filled surface. And when we go to the command surfaces filled surface, we're going to pick this edge here, the open edge of our model. We're going to say that we want SolidWorks not to just lay that blanket over that opening, but that we want it to be tangent to the surrounding faces. So now we get a nice smooth transition coming off of that face. And we're going to go down here to where it says constraint curves, and we're going to pick on this spline. And when we do that, we are very happy to see that SolidWorks is able to leave us with a nice smooth transition into that constraint curve from our original face. So we hit the green check mark and boom, there we go. Looks a little bit, it looks like I went a little bit too crazy with my spline. Should have maybe had a little bit more of a smooth spline there. Let me see if I can fix that, uh, fix some of those divots just by making the spline a little bit smoother. Let's see what that looks like now. Oh, yeah, much better, much, much better. So just a little bit too uh, too extreme there with my spline. But now we need to turn this back into a solid because this is still a surface. And so to do that, what we can do is we can go to the command surfaces, knit surface. And then we can choose these two surfaces and we can choose this option here that says create solid. So surfaces, knit surface, choose those two surfaces, create solid, hit the green check mark and boom. We now have created that nice solid shape with that beautiful transition into our finger grips for that model. So this is a really cool exercise that you can do. A uh, couple of little tips here when it comes to the, the soap bottle example. Uh, what I did was I created a layout sketch in that um, filled surface grip layout. So there's a, there's a layout sketch here you can see that kind of represents my fingers. So these circles here represent my fingers. And then I'm using that layout sketch to help, you know, just make sure that there's a little bit of consistency. Have a, a linear sketch pattern here for those circles. So that makes that pattern look a little bit more consistent. The other thing is when you turn your solid body into a surface and then back into a solid, you adjust the body ID on the model. So when I did this, I already had the rest of the feature tree created. So I went through and created it, turned it into, you know, turned it into a solid. And then I already had the shell created. Well, when I rolled forward, this shell errored because um, all of the face IDs were now different. The body ID was now different. So basically I had to repair every feature all throughout the rest of the tree because the body ID changed. So just be aware of that. But when you're done, you could go back in here. You could say view, display, tangent edge is removed. That way everything looks smooth. It looks really good for the customer. And that is how a SolidWorks expert would go through and create that kind of grippy shape on a bottle or on a handle or whatever the device is that you are designing. So let me know down in the comments what you thought about this video. Let me know if you like this style of just kind of me talking to the camera, not too many edits. And um, let me know if you learned anything from this video. Hopefully you did. And if you really like my style and you want to take some training with me, visit us at twotalltoby.com training. See you, everybody.